What's up guys, Eric here, welcome to Rant Review. In this video, we're gonna be talking about The Flash Season 6, episode titled The Exorcism of Nash Wells. So careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with The Flash this season. Let's just jump into this. If you can't tell, I'm very congested, guys. I do apologize. It's that time of year, allergies, I'm gonna sound nasally. I'm sorry, I'm doing my best to fight it, but we'll see what's going to happen. There's so many other things going on in my life right now. My allergies are like the least of my concern. You guys know what I'm talking about here. Uh, so in this week's episode, we have a few things happening. We're dealing with the Thawne uh, Nash stuff. We're dealing with Mira Iris and Camilla. Now Mira Camilla. So we have Miris and Marilla. Like Mira Iris is Miris and Camilla is... Marilla, I guess. I don't know. I'm trying to find a way to keep track of all these different characters. Um, we have Joe and uh, the mole at the CCPD, and we're also trying to create our own speed force this week. So, uh, so many exciting things. Let's start out with the Joe stuff at CCPD because I just love Joe so much. He's one of my favorite characters on these shows. Um, and yeah, on the flash, he absolutely shines. We got to see Captain Singh again, which was really cool. Fun seeing him again. It's been a while since he's been back in any capacity. So having him there was awesome. The scenes between him and Joe were really good. And Joe was just dead set on finding out who this mole is. And the reason why it's so important, I think, to bring it up in this episode was because it's sort of tied into this story with uh, Miris and Marilla and the prismatic refractor is what Eva's looking for so of course they uh, they tie all that together with this mole at CCPD because the item itself can't be stored at certain places because it can be compromised so it's kind of playing hot potato with this item and uh, I'm okay with that. Typically, I don't like this idea of this item that just sort of drives people in certain directions. That's why I kind of have an issue with the Luma Fate uh, on Legends this season and any item like that where it just kind of drives the episode. I didn't really have too much trouble with it this week because we also had the story with Thawne and Nash. So it sort of balanced itself out. So I wasn't paying too much attention to it. Um, as far as Camilla goes, we ended last week with her being stuck in the mirror dimension. Now we have Marilla. As I said, we don't really know where Camilla is. We just know that supposedly she's in a safe place, I think is how uh, Eva put it. So so now we have a the fake Iris and the fake Camilla. And so life goes on. Uh, Iris didn't get out of the mirror world this week either. But at least there's something like I feel like this episode sort of propelled it forward a little bit. Um, it gave us a chance to sort of catch our breath and see where the story is kind of going. So that sort of makes sense. We do know that Eva definitely has a revenge arc coming up um, against Black Hole. So it's all going to sort of tie together by the end, I hope. I think Eric Wallace wants to have all the stories sort of convalesce together into one place. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Sunshine, who was the villain of the week, I guess. You could say that for Black Hole. And um, her powers were basically like, uh, I can't remember how what Barry called them, but uh, she has to have sunlight. And with sunlight, she could turn herself invisible. She can create heat with her body, burn people, burn things. So she's a pretty formidable uh, villain, I guess you could say. Uh, but she is, uh, if you cut her off from sunlight, she's blocked by the shadows. She basically loses her power. And I was glad to see, like, I guess Barry come up with this because one of the things we're doing with Barry this, this week in this episode is we're dealing with the aftermath of losing the speed force and the effects it's having on Barry and his life. So, I'm kind of torn with the way the story works because Barry has lost his speed before. I think almost once a season, every season, with the exception of maybe last season. I don't even remember if he had one last season. There's always an episode or a period of time where Barry can't use his speed. Um, so I realize that he's having a tough time adjusting to it. But I mean, it's been this is year six. You've lost your speed every year <laughs> all the way up till now. So, I mean, there should be sort of some like replacement flash uh, initiative or something in the system so that when Barry loses his speed, they don't really have to worry too much about it. Uh, but, you know, we're dealing with that. And so uh, that's one of Barry's things is he's dealing with having to make up for not having his powers. And so having him be the one to sort of come up with the plan to stop, um, you know, Sunshine, I thought was really good. And uh, yeah, and oddly enough, Miris was the one who gave, or Myris is the one who gave um, Barry the advice. Oddly enough, though, it was fun seeing Joe pick up on her not being herself. I thought that was absolutely awesome. He kept saying, go see your husband. Like, yes, 
Finally, she was totally just focused on this prismatic refractor and where they were going to put it and didn't care that Barry was having trouble. So I was so glad to see Joe actually chime in on that. And now things are starting to unfold with with uh, with Miris. Um, people are starting to see that she actually is not who she says she is. So, yeah, but she gave Barry good advice because it ended up allowing him to stop this villain from Black Hole. So jumping back over to Sunshine and the Refractor, it kind of, like I said, it's hot potatoes. Certain people have it at certain different times. There's a fight scene with her and Frost, which I was like, okay, it's cool they're fighting, but it was really, like you could tell they were shooting around Danielle. So there was some weird cuts in it. Uh, the music for Sunshine's fight scenes, that one and the one with the Argus soldiers was so bad. The one with the Argus soldiers was particularly bad. Uh, I don't know what was going on with the music in this episode. I did not like it in, in either of the fights. So uh, so the Refractor is the big selling point here. And um, now we know that, uh, yeah, that it's back in the hands of Eva and something's going to go on with that. So uh, Barry has this watch. I wanted to bring this up. I should have brought it up earlier, I guess. Barry has this watch that is designed to show him how much, you know, how much speed he's actually using. And it goes from green to red. And, um, it's pretty handy, I guess, because anytime he's using his speed for anything, whether it be healing or thinking or reading, or just any time he's connecting to that speed, the watch is going to notify him. And we see it go off a couple of times in this episode. And I'm guessing we're gonna have to deal with that at least for another week, maybe two weeks, uh, of the flash. Uh, so, so creating your own speed force, isn't that easy. It isn't as easy as I guess Barry thought it was going to be. Obviously, Cisco, Caitlin, they're like, no, we can't do it. Thawne's the only person that did it. He's not going to tell us, obviously. But Barry seems to be dead set on understanding how to create his own speed force. And so that's kind of the theme that runs throughout the episode as well. He tries using Velocity X or whatever that formula is. It doesn't work on him. Basically, it gives him a boost for a very short time and it doesn't really bond with his body. And that was something that Caitlin had warned him about. Uh, but by the end of the episode, after we're dealing with the Thawne and the Nash stuff, which we'll talk about in a moment, Barry decides that we're going to use Nora's journal to create a speed force. So I think we're going to get different color lightning. I think Barry's lightning is going to change once they create their own speed force. So I don't know. It's going to be kind of cool. Um, we did see a flash, I think, when he was using the velocity, where his lightning changed to two different colors for a second there. And that was kind of neat as well. Let's talk about the Nash Thawne stuff. So we we know that Nash is possessed by Thawne. He tricks the team and he's just he's able to feed off of Thawne. Or, oh, I'm so confused here. Uh, feed, uh, feed off of Nash. Uh, feed. Uh, Feed off of Nash's emotions, how much regret he feels, how much sadness he feels. He's able to feed off of that to give him his connection to the negative speed force. And so they have to work quickly to stop this. Cisco tries a few things. He gets Cecile to come in to try and help. And I'm still kind of confused on Cecile's powers. Obviously, they're empathic, but there's it's weird how they work. Anyway, they figure they cannot um, save Nash the way they're trying to do it, which is like bombarding negative tachyons with positive tachyons because Thawne is just too strong. So they have to go into the mindscape and go into Nash's head and sort of like try and help him get around Thawne's possession and they figure it out. And so they manage to get Thawne out of Nash and uh, we find out some details about Nash. So I believe he's from Earth 719. Allegra's doppelganger was named Maya. She did not have powers. She became a treasure hunter with Nash, which I thought was interesting. And they built up years of working together. She ends up getting killed on an expedition or a treasure hunt. And he feels totally guilty for it. And so it's eating him up inside. And he never really dealt with it. So that's part of where we're going in this episode. And I thought that was all really cool. It was great seeing that. We didn't see Allegra this week, which is weird because I think Allegra would have been useful against Sunshine. And I'm not sure if we know where Allegra is. She's just not there. And, um, so anyway, so now that Thawne is gone, <laughs> supposedly, where did he go? They're like, he's out there looking to possess a body. So I have a theory. I actually have two theories. The first one is that I believe Thawne is going to possess someone who is not Tom Cavanaugh, someone that they can keep on the show and use whatever they need to, or the fact that he can be anyone at any time means that they could always have a different reverse flash. This could be like great it could be awesome it could you know we could see variations of the reverse the reverse flash all over the place or it could be like the thinker where we have these these moments where he shines and then moments where he's not great depending on who's acting out the character so i think 
honestly, they want to use a reverse flash multiple times. They can't keep using the Thawn version or the they can't keep using the Wells Bard version. So this is their way of getting around that. It's also a way of breaking away from Tom Cavanaugh in case he ever wants to leave the show. They can keep using reverse flash. So my theories are, are is he going to possess Godspeed? The Godspeed clones out there that already have a connection to the Speed Force, or at least a version of the Speed Force that maybe they created with the whole black hole situation. Is Thawne going to like possess someone that's in the Godspeed suit, and we're going to see a Godspeed reverse flash running around? I am not the biggest Godspeed fan, but I think that would be awesome. We could get a brand new reverse flash wearing the Godspeed suit with a completely different actor who gives us like a great performance. I don't know if he's going to beat Tom or Matt, but give us a great performance and create this new reverse flash type character to face off against Barry, who's linked up with Black Hole. That would be really cool. So Godspeed reverse flash. I guess I'm on board with that. I think it would be kind of fun. Um, what about female speedsters? What if Black Hole has someone like Mina Dawes Darwin, who uh, I guess fast track from the comics, who they could use to have Thawne get inside of her you know, mind or whatever. And then we have like a, a female reverse flash, uh, who works for black hole. That's also a possibility. Now, whether Thawne would actually work for black hole or not, I don't know if he sees value in what they're doing, he might, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm totally on board with those kinds of changes. I think that would be great. It'd be a lot of fun. And I really, really enjoyed this episode. Goodbye. Wells, the bard and Thawne welcome the Nash of many wells, because now Nash is still around. He's going to be our one and only wells for, a long while, I guess. And uh, he has the ability to tap into Wells from the multiverse, which is a very unique power, I guess you could say. So it's going to be interesting to see like how they work that out uh, moving forward with the series and whether he's actually going to stick around or not. Overall, this was a pretty good episode of The Flash. I did have one little complaint, which is sort of just a nitpick, and it was about the, um, the Frost fight with uh, Sunshine. And um, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but... The fact that she was able to get there without using one of the teleporting portals, which they can't use anymore, they don't work, um, without being able to get there that quickly, I found it odd that the, that Frost was able to get from Star Labs all the way to the facility after Iris hit the button within like 30 seconds. I know she could move fast because of her powers, but that was super, super fast, almost flash fast, and I don't really understand how that worked. Maybe there's something else going on. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, but that's really my only complaint. Everything else I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed it. So I think I'm going to give this episode, like, I love the Thawne stuff with Nash. So I'm going to give it, like, a 9 out of 10. Again, another solid episode of The Flash. These have been two of the best episodes we've had this season, some of the best episodes we've had in the last couple years. So I'm totally okay with that. I'm, I'm good with giving it a 9. I think it's totally deserving of it. I sound horrible, so congested. I'm on medication, <laughs> so out of it. So I'm so sorry if I seem kind of all over the place, guys. It's really just my allergies messing with me and a lot of bad news because of what's going on around the world right now. So I do apologize for that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> 9 out of 10, it's my score. What would you guys score this episode? Go down in the comments below and uh, let me know. Also, in case you missed it, uh, The Flash is taking a break next week. And then when it comes back, I believe we're gonna it's going to be a rerun because they're going to be staggering the release of new episodes until they can go back and start filming to finish the season. This is kind of something that uh, Paige and I talked about in a live stream. We'll probably discuss it again in a live stream tonight. So uh, if you have any questions about it, hopefully we'll have more answers by then. Uh, subscribe if you're new to my channel. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this episode of The Flash. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts uh, this week. What do you think about the Iris story, the Mir Miris uh, the Marilla, uh, what did you think of that? What do you think about the, uh, the reveal of the situation with Nash and all the different wells in his mind? What did you think about Thawne? Just your thoughts in general, leave it in the comment section below. And, um, that's pretty much it. If you feel inclined, join team Eric, uh, I know that it's a tough time for everybody, so I'm not going to push it too hard. But if you want to support the channel, uh, I would very much appreciate it, considering that uh, <laughs> I don't have a regular job anymore. So uh, for now, this is it. So let's hope that I can make this work. Anyway, I'll catch you guys uh, in the next video. See you later.